What is up, good people? We are on section 1.7, day two, transformation of functions. We're going to be working with cubic functions and square root functions. And we are closing out this chapter. Yes, I'm very excited to do that. And we are um, and look for a chapter one project on the horizon. Very excited. It's going to be awesome. All right, check this out. Uh, we're, I've got a new function here. That's take the rule is take the input and multiply it by itself three times. Whew, not just two times, three times. Let's see what happens. Uh, maybe the positive numbers will be easier. So you start with say positive two, multiply it by itself three times, two to the third power, that is eight. One times itself three times is one. Zero times itself three times is zero. Negative one times itself three times. That's be negative one times negative one times negative one. Well, two of the negatives will cancel out, but you're still left with one of them. So at the end of the day, you're still the output's going to be a negative number. Negative two times negative two is positive four, and then times negative two again is negative eight. So what you see here is you get these outputs right here, and each row corresponds to a point on the graph, and it looks like this. Funky. It's like this S-shaped curve. Uh, not e or not even s. Uh, it's a, what we'll, we'll call it a cubic curve, because you know the three. This is a x cubed. Um, interesting. We'll talk about the features of this graph in a second. Um, here's the square root of x. And if we haven't taken the square root of stuff in a while, um, when you take the square root of a number, you ask yourself basically what number times itself would give you the number that you see in the square root. So. Uh, the that and that's the rule for this function. You take the input and take its square root. So, if I'm going to choose these uh, x values, these inputs a bit judiciously here, I'm going to be choosy and not just choose any any uh, zero one two. I'm going to go zero one four nine because I know I have the foresight to know that those will be easy calculations. Um, what number times itself is nine? Uh, well. Maybe you can figure this out in a bit. Let's start with zero. What number times um, itself is zero? Oh, that'd be zero. What number times itself is one? It's one. What number times itself is four? That'd be two. So when you take the square root of four, that's two. What number times itself is nine? Oh, you can figure that out. Now, what number times itself is negative one? You might be tempted to say that it's negative 1, but negative 1 times itself is not negative 1. It's positive 1. Or what number times itself is negative 4? Uh, well, you might be tempted to say negative 2, but it's not, because negative 2 times itself is positive 4. So there's really no number that we know of yet that can, uh, when you multiply it by itself, you get negative 4 or negative 1. So therefore, what we've got... it. it you can say this is undefined. You can write this in the table. But really what we've got to do is, stri is strike these x values from the table. We have to remove them. They're not in the domain. They don't have a, a corresponding number that they pair with. So um, so you, we have to say that numbers like negative 1 and negative 4 and negative 9 and negative 16 and negative 10 and negative 2 and negative 3, all these negative numbers don't have corresponding outputs, so therefore they are not in the domain. They shouldn't be on the table. They don't produce an output. They, they don't produce any points on the graph over here. Like you, The entire negative half of the x-axis is just blank. You start at zero, and you can take square roots of any positive number you want. Positive 9 is easy, that's 3. Positive 4 is easy, that's 2. Positive 1 is easy, that's 1. And there's and you connect the dots, and you get this kind of sideways parabola. The parabola is definitely sideways, like this. Like if you look at it on side, if you turn your notes to the side, you get an exact perfect shape of a parabola. It's just been, it's um, it's, it's sideways. So that's we're gonna call this a square root curve right here, and that's um, that's another parent function. I mean, this is. The good news about introducing these new kinds of functions is that now you can also take transformations of them, too. You could do x squared, x to the third power, plus 1. That'd be a vertical shift of 1. Or a square root of x minus 1, uh, all inside of the, f the function. So that, that's just more things that you can do, more power you have. Here's another function. Um, 
it, if the input is negative four, the output is zero. If the input is zero, the output is four. If the input is two, the output is negative four. And if the input is three, the output is zero. And all, the, all these points in between also correspond to input and output pairings. And beyond that, we don't really have any definition. There's no, this is just a weird piecewise function. And it's defined graphically like this. There's, there's not even a table. You could make a table, but I'm going to say that at the start that we're defining this graph like this. So let's just check out some of the functions uh, that we could have. Um, let's, let's check out the, uh, let's talk about these functions. The cubic curve right here, the domain, all real numbers. Because uh, on the table, you can take any number you want and it'll, and produce a y value. And the x value will produce a y value. Um, the range is all real numbers because all of these on the table, all y values are represented. Um, like it could, you could take, you can get any number you want on the any real number you want over here along the uh, as an output. Similarly, if you collect all the x values of this curve, because remember it continues on, it just doesn't stop here all the x values of all the points on this curve and you get all real numbers. Every number along the x-axis is represented. And it's the same as the y-axis. Collect all the y values and every number along the y-axis is represented. So all real numbers for both. Is it continuous? Yes. One, f one, um, one, if one fell swoop of your pencil, you can draw the entire thing without having to jump or break. Does it pass the one to, is it one to one? Does it pass the horizontal line test? And the answer is actually yes, because there's no repeats in the, in the outputs. Every output, like the, the output of eight has exactly one input. And if you try, try and find that correspondingly over here, a horizontal line at height of eight will only cross the graph once. And that's true for every horizontal line. It only crosses it once. Even right here in the middle, it, at the x-axis, it only intersects the x-axis one at zero once at zero. Are there any extrema? No. No extrema. There is no no relative minimums or relative maximums. No no maximums, no minimums. What kind of end behavior does it have? It has down, up end behavior. So you can see as x goes to negative infinity on the table, y goes to negative infinity as well. As x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity as well. Um let's talk about the features of the square root curve. The domain, as we've already said, we've had to strike all negative numbers from the domain because they don't produce any outputs. Uh, they can't. So the domain starts at zero and goes to positive infinity, as we can see here. Those are the, and graphically, um, you collect all the x values of all these points, they would, uh, on the graph, they would only represent the numbers zero to infinity including zero. What's the range? Same thing. We only have positive numbers in this range. We only have positive y values for these points. So, or sorry, positive and also zero. So, so the range is from zero, including zero, up to positive infinity. Continuous? Yes. Pass the one-to-one -one test? Yes. For the same reason this one does. Uh, pass the horizontal line test and it, yes, it is one-to-one. -one. Where's the vertex? Um, it is, for both of these, it is zero, zero. You can say that there's a vertex here, and we can say it has a vertex here. Um, what are the extrema? Well, it does have a minimum value of zero. That's the lowest y value on the table. It's the lowest point. The y value of the lowest point on the graph is zero. And where is it? It's when x is e equal to zero. Um, and behavior, you can say as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity as well. Uh, it, this does not have down, up, end behavior. It only has one up because x, x doesn't go to negative infinity. You, only, you can only say that as x goes to positive infinity on the table, y will also go to positive infinity. And the same thing on the graph. Let's talk about the features of this piecewise function. What is the domain? We collect all the x values on this graph and it's just the numbers from negative four to three. And remember, this is an interval here. This is not a location on the graph. I'm not trying to say the x value is y is negative four and the y value is three. I'm trying to say that this is an interval of x values. X, um, x can go as low as negative four and up as high as three, and that's it. 
what are the y values? What's the collection of all the y values? Well, the range would be from negative 4 to positive 4 here. Is it continuous? Yes. Is it one to one? No, because a horizontal line would cut multiple times. Um, what's the vertex? No, there's no vertex. It's not really applicable. It has some really interesting extrema. It has a maximum value of 4. That's the highest value. If you were going to make a table, the highest value would be 4. And the highest point is right here. And where is that exactly? It's at x equals 0. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Because this is going to be a bit much. All right. Um, the extrema, yeah. It has a minimum of negative 4 here. The minimum value on the table is here. The lowest point on the graph is here. And where is that? When x is equal to 2. It has a relative maximum of 3 here. Uh, sorry, a relative maximum of 0 here, and that's when x is equal to 3. And a relative minimum of 0 when x is equal to negative 4. Um, yeah, I think you could, you could probably technically call this point over here a relative minimum and a relative max. Uh, sorry, a relative minimum here as well as a minimum. Depending on, uh, based on our definition of what a relative minimum is. What's the end behavior of this? That doesn't apply because x, x doesn't go to positive or negative infinity. All right, let's write a function for each transformation. So here, it's, it's kind of like going backwards from what we've done before. We've seen, um, we have seen equation table graph and w w we're given the equation and then we have to say what kind of uh, transformation it is. But here I'm gonna give you the graph. And so the this, if this the original here is dotted, this black dotted black line, then the blue is going to be a horizontal shift of plus two. And so the function, uh, we know it's a parabola, that's the shape. So g of x, the transform function would be x minus two squared. It's minus two because we know I'm taking the opposite of plus two, and it's a squared because I know it's a parabola shape. Both of them are parabola shape. Here. Uh, looking at this vertex, it's and it's actually easiest to see that it's a, a shift of 2 because you're looking at the vertex. I should have said that earlier. Vertex starts at 0, 0, and then goes uh, shifted negative 1 and in a horizontal direction and a vertical shift of negative 1 as well. So this, if we know it's a horizontal shift of minus 1, then we change it on the inside. Um, we change negative 1 to be positive 1 because it's uh, we're talking about the inside portion of this. Uh, 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 function rule here. The equation is going to be x squared plus 1 squared minus 1. Plus 1 on the inside, minus 1 on the outside. And if we wanted to, we could we could like ignore this graph and then take this equation and go equation table graph and we if we plotted out all the points, we'd get this exact curve. Alright. So here's uh, here the fun one. We've got this blue, the black, the dotted black line is the original. Oh, these points are off. Um, yeah, okay. So, here's the, here's a square root curve. I recognize it as a square root curve because I saw it before in the notes. And I have them uh, memorized at this point. I've been using them so much. Square root curve. It's sideways. It only has one arm. And it, uh, and it has a vertex at 0, 0. Compare that with the transformed blue function. And all of a sudden, um, this, this blue version, ha the vertex is the same. And you look at the vertex to see if there's any horizontal or, or vertical shifts. Those shifts are going to be indicated by the vertex. We can see they share the same vertex. So there's no horizontal or vertical shifting, but something strange is going on. It's way taller. It's higher up. It's further away from the x-axis. It has been stretched. Perhaps even a vertical stretch. You could say, uh, and um, I identified these points as going through, like, easy to read locations on the graph. This 4, 2, oh, I take the square root of 4, you get 2. Um, but look at this. It's been transformed. It's much higher. Uh, how many times higher is 6 than 2? Like 2 times what gives you 6? It's 3. So that's how I can say it's a vertical dilation of 3. 
Everything has been stretched vertically three times as high. So therefore, you could say um, this is, uh, if the vertical dilation is three, then three, it, it should be multiplication on the outside using our handy dandy quick summary. So therefore, g of x is going to equal three square root of x, three times the square root of x. Remember, in your previous notes, we had Vert, if it's a vertical dilation, that means vertical dilation, that means outside multiplication. Uh, here, remember the, the, the black, the dotted black is the original. Oh, that's a cube, cube curve. And, um, oh, interesting. I've identified this point and this point as easy to read places, and it looks like this has been uh, dilated. It's been flipped. So if if x here on the dotted original, if x is equal to 1, then 1 times itself 3 times is also 1. But here it's been um, it's been shifted, the not shifted. The, it has not been shifted at all actually. It's been, you can see the the vertex is still at 0, 0. The up arm and the down arm uh, kind of go meet together still at zero zero so I'm thinking we're looking at a dilation here and you can go the the x value used to be one and now it's negative two so what if we um, what if we divided this x value by negative two we would get positive one yeah so the horizontal dilation is going to be um, of negative two and re remembering from the formula um, if we want a horizontal dilation of negative 2, we'd have to have it here. I'm thinking that this might be good to do a table on. And I'm wondering if I can change this. I don't really want it to say f of all that. I wanted to say, because I've identified it as a cubic curve. Cubic curve. That might be a bit more specific. cubic curve has a horizontal dilation of negative 2 because x divided by negative 2. All right. Let's go down here. Check this out. Here's our funky piecewise function from before. The original is in black. And, um, and it looks like it's the same shape. It hasn't been stretched. It hasn't been compressed. It hasn't been uh, flipped, so therefore we'll call that uh, like it has, so therefore it hasn't been dilated. But all the points have been shifted. It looks like they're two units to the left of what they used to be to get the blue. Like you start with black and then you get blue by shifting every every point over two units. That sounds like a horizontal shift of negative two, and so therefore we'd have to write the function as a uh, x plus two on the inside. Whatever function this is the plus two is on the inside, and that's how that's that's what we can write it as. Same thing over here. Um, it's the same shape. It has not been dilated. However, we can read this and see, oh, wait a minute, it looks like it's two units higher than it used to be. So that, uh, just remembering our quick summary, uh, we've got, that, that means if we have a vertical shift of plus two, that means it's going to have to be outside addition. Outside addition is here g of x, the transformed blue version, would be f of x plus 2. Uh, and that's all we got for today with the notes. Uh, glad to see you're following along. Um, I wanted to say for your audio check, what club, uh, one more club that I used to, I used to, I was in a lot of clubs in high school, but one that I was in was the engineering club. And I wish we had robotics as awesome as this school. Um, you, if you're in robotics, you got to know that it's something really super special and uh, take advantage of that because my engineering club was just paper and pencil taking tests. It was, I, I enjoyed it because the friends I had in there were lots of fun and the teacher was fun too. And uh, while everyone, it was open, these tests were group tests. We would submit one test. Um, we'd like go to the, go, go to the school, go to like the competition location. They'd hand us a uh, couple, couple copies of the test but we'd have to hand one back as like the answers from the group. And, um, 
gosh, it would be so it would have been so much more fun to actually build a robot. Um, um, so if you're in robotics, enjoy it. I was in engineering club, and that's your audio check. All right, let's practice some calculator skills. So pause the video, go grab your calculator. Pause the video, grabbing that calculator. All right, welcome back. Here we go. So what you should do is go to the B scratchpad and let's type in some equations graph. And you're going to go to the, num the button right next to the 9. And you, you can either use the trackpad or I like to use the arrows. Go to, let's just do two pieces for a piecewise function. The, the, um, the menu option to the, next, to the right of it will give you three pieces. Let's go x squared. And then the condition would be x, and then control equals will give you the symbols that we need for uh, greater than symbol. x is greater than 0. And then navigate down. I think you might be able to press enter at that point, but I think you could also just use arrows. Type in abs for absolute value, parentheses x. And then to the right... Let's see, if the first piece is greater than zero, then we have to do x is control equals less than equal to, you can also use the arrows to select within that menu, less than or equal to, and then enter, and zero, and enter the whole thing. And you can see it's a really funky piecewise function. To the right is a parabola, to the left is an absolute value. Go to tab, and for f2, we're going to say that f2 of x is equal to f1 of x. Close the parentheses, and then to give it a vertical shift of 2. And look, there it is! Tab. Let's give it a horizontal shift. Minus 1. Enter. Good! You can see it's horizontally shifted to the right one unit. Tab. Let's modify it again. Up. And then let's give it a... Oops, too far. Let's give it a vertical dilation of 0.5. That would, that would mean it's compressing vertically. It's fl getting flatter. Good. There it is. Let's clear it all out. Control, delete, enter. Do it again for F1. Control, delete, enter, clean up that home screen, and I'll see you in class.